please subscribe Sporta TV for more information, MotoGP and Formula 1 2023. Mark Marquez's adaptation to the Ducati may be more challenging because of his advancing years, Simon Crafar believes. Marquez spent 11 seasons riding for Honda, winning eight world championships along the way. But he has joined Grazzini to ride a year-old Ducati in 2024, hoping he can fight for the MotoGP title on new machinery. He's in his 30s now, warned ex-racer Crafar from inside the Qatar testing paddock. From my own experience, it becomes more difficult to adapt. The younger you are, the quicker you can adapt to new bikes, tires, setups. You can tell he's not joking. He's not pretending. He's having difficulty changing from the Honda riding style to the Ducati riding style. Marquez, age 31, had a fairly low-key preseason through Sepling in Qatar, after shining in the postseason test at Valencia on his Ducati debut last year. His crash, his first on a Ducati, in the final hour of the final day of testing could be interpreted as Marquez finding more confidence to edge nearer to the limit of his new bike. Crafar said on the final day of the test, whenever it comes to crunch time which is now, the end of the test, you've got to put everything together and go, you can rely on Mark to pull something out. He said about the serenity within Ducati, they are totally on target. There's no chaos. All of the 23 Ducati riders, meaning Grazzini and VR46, are coming along, as well. You can tell that they are getting confident. The ones like Alex Marquez and Marco Bezecchi, that rode the 22 last year, have said that they felt better on the 23 than the 22. Mark Marquez is making friends with it now. On Monday, Mark didn't look good. But I believe he had more. Because he only used three tires out of nine. The fastest lap time was on a 20-something high lap tire. So you knew he had more in the bag. Sure enough, he showed it, on Tuesday. The 24 and 23 Ducatis look great. Marc Marquez's GP23 is the bike that was used by Francesco Bagnaia and Jorge Martin as they fought for the championship last year. But factory Ducati rider Bagnaia and Promax Martin have now stepped onto the GP24, which notably features a new fairing which every rider has now accepted is an advancement from last year's bike. On the other hand, Luca Marini heads into his first season as a Repsol Honda MotoGP rider under no illusions about the size of the task ahead. The Italian finished 1.7s from Francesco Bagnaia at the final preseason test in Qatar, as the four RCV riders were classified a closely matched 17th, Johan Zarco, 18th, Takaki Nakagami, 19th, Joan Mir, and 20th, Marini. The time attack form served to highlight the ongoing lack of rear grip produced by the Honda. It looks like we are still far away, but the feeling on the bike is improved today, so I'm satisfied on one side, Marini said. But for sure the gap is really huge, especially when we want to put the new tire, the soft tire, we cannot use them well. In this moment we start really from behind, we need to be patient. We will arrive. But at least the area of weakness is crystal clear. Rear grip. In entry, mid-corner, and on exit. Now we have to look only at this part of the bike, because it's where we are missing more, said the former VR46 Ducati rider. For sure there is a lack in some other things on the bike. But for now, the grip is what doesn't allow us to be fast and strong, with the soft rear tire especially, but also with the pace with used tires. It's not only on exit, but it's also on entry to the corner, because today I was following a bit all the other bikes and I could see where they are stronger than us. Turning to the record-breaking lap time of fellow VR46 Academy rider and reigning double world champion Banyaya, Marini quipped. I think that Pekka was pushing to have more, bargaining, power for the Inu, contract with Ducati. He's showing his strength and he's doing a great job. KTM heads into the new MotoGP season much more confident than one year ago with both Brad Binder and Jack Miller sure that the RC16 has made a clear step forward for 2024. The Austrian factory proved to be Ducati's closest challenger last season, when Binder was a best yet fourth in the riders' standings and KTM second in the constructors. That was despite some worrying preseason pace, but this winter has gone far more smoothly. A KTM was inside the top four at the end of three out of the five days of official testing and, 
while Binder was only ninth at the end of Qatar, his best lap was blighted by yellow flags. More significantly, Brat Binder was one of only two riders, the other being Gasca's rookie Pedro Acosta, to put in a full race simulation, and was 10 seconds faster than Fabio Di Antonio's race-winning pace at last November's Grand Prix. Today was pretty cool. We managed to squash everything in and tried a few settings as well as a full race simulation, said Binder. There was a bit of a drop, in pace, but nothing crazy. It was better compared to the race here last year. That's the most important. The South African ran out of fuel on the slowdown lap and thanked some Promac team members for pushing him back to the pits. Then I was unlucky to have two yellow flags on my time attack lap, but other than that I was happy. Brad Binder added. I think our bike is working really well and we've clearly made a step from last season. I'm happy with the way the bike's working. Let's see where we are next week. Brad Binder's teammate Jack Miller was 11th on the timesheets. A positive last day here and I'm pretty happy where we are with the bike. I made a few setup changes today and I think we are in the right ballpark to get the season underway. All in all it's been a good preseason and the boys have done a fantastic job through the winter with the improvements and I believe we have a very competitive bike to go racing. That conclusion was echoed by team manager Francesco Guidotti. The riders were happy. We made a forward step compared to the last time we were here and that was clear with the lap times. We still need a bit more though, but we are on the way. We are working and we can see the improvements. It's been a good preseason and the general pace has been under the lap record both times and we are also right there. We will be ready, and we have to deliver. We are happy and confident with our package, said technical director Sebastian Riss. We had a good time here and we are confident for the first race now. On the other hand, Maverick Vinales had struggled to adapt fully to the new Aprilia RSGP24 bike in Sepang and on day one of the Qatar MotoGP test. But that is no longer the case after finding the best aero package to suit his riding style. Vinales, like teammate Alix Espargaro and Trackhouse Racing's Raul Fernandez, was fast throughout the final day of preseason testing. Vinales was one of the few riders able to pose a serious threat to Ducati, who ended the test fastest with Francesco Bagnaia. Vinales told MotoGP.com, From my side it has been good. The good thing is that we found the best aero package for us. That's fantastic because we solved this problem that we had in Sepang and the first day here in Qatar. Right now it is okay. Now I need to work a bit more on the electronics because with the new engine I'm not on point, especially on the engine brake so it's something we will do on the race weekend. At Sepang it seemed as though KTM were best prepared to launch a challenge against Ducati in 2024. And although that might still be the case when racing begins, Aprilia seemed to take a bigger step forward compared to the Austrian brand in Qatar. Choosing not to play down his chances given the outright potential of the RSGP machine, Vanellis said they can be competitive if they do things correctly at the first round. Of course we have a chance because the bike is fast but we need to analyze well this test and also the race. Race 1 to race 2 will be completely different. It's always the case. You need to be calm at the beginning of the season.